viewers, Horseshoe Curve, it's out. Let's look. Let's kick it off. Training, you get four. Horseshoe Curve introduction, GP30A2 introduction, and the ES44AC introduction. I do strongly recommend that you watch my tutorials in how to drive and set up and recover from emergencies and that sort of thing. You get a little bit more information than you do in these tutorials here. Use them together. The long train's introduction, I reckon this one misses the mark. It artificially holds the train brakes back from charging up, just to prove a point about long train charge-ups. And I think, well, it actually takes about 30 minutes to complete it, but eh, I think it needs a little bit of work. Okay, scenarios. There are a bunch. There's pushed aside for the GP38-2, where you get some pushed into a siding and you let another priority train pass you. Honk for the camera. Now this one's really cool because the AI trains honk too and it's the only time they do it in the game. So I'm quite happy with this one. It's quite impressive. It's also really cool to see how the uh, little park has shaped up over the time. In fact, you'll notice this image is from pretty early in the piece. The park doesn't quite look like that now. Does wet coal burn? This one's long and it's difficult. It's down very steep gradients. Very, very slippery. Lots of fun. Good luck. <laughs> Complication at Crescent. This one, I think, needs a little bit of work. So I reckon I'd leave it for the moment and come back to it when it gets a bit of a, bit of a patch. Evening Tidy Up. This one's brilliant. This one is really, really good. The people that put this one together are really creative. It's the kind of shunting puzzle that you would get on a real railway. And I really like it. I like what they do. It's out of the ordinary and it's a lot of fun. I really encourage you to give it a try. Even if you don't like shunting, go and give it a try because I think you'll probably actually enjoy it. All right, timetable wise, let's look at the GP38-2 first up. So you get a bunch of services. It's not a very big bunch, but it's a bunch. So there's several mainline jobs and this little holiday, holiday Berg local. So they're all quite cool and appreciate getting the GP38-2 out on the main line, which is good. That shows that feedback is listened to because that was a strong bit of feedback that people wanted it on the line. All right, now onto the ES44AC, which is the hero of this particular route, obviously. There are heaps and there's another heap and another heap. And another heap, and another heap, and another heap, and another heap, and some more heaps, and a couple more heaps, and maybe there's just a mountain of services throughout the day. Now, I've got to say, I'm not a mainline freight person, because they're normally big, long, end-to-end -end things, and they take forever. Well, these don't. For the most part, these run around the hour mark, a little over. Some of them are a bit longer than that. But this route keeps you on your toes. There's ups, there's downs, there's corners, there's tons of traffic, there's adverse signalling in a lot of the services because there's something running in front of you, something annoying I might add, but it's in front of you and it actually makes the gameplay quite top notch. It's really cool. So, yeah, I like this one. I reckon this is a bit of a winner. So let's have a bit of a listen to each of the locomotives now. Let's just pick one vaguely random. Ah, uh, yeah. This one will do. Well, there she is. Let's have a listen to the horn. Pretty good horn. No obvious looping. Sounds nice. Correct bell. Now we're in neutral, so let's just listen to the throttle up. Sounds pretty good to me. All right, so in the cab, we do get 
this new screen, which we haven't seen anywhere else. It doesn't do a hell of a lot. It gets your speed up the top, not much more than that. The operation of the other screens is similar to similar locomotives that we already have in the game. The controls are quite similar to similar locomotives that we already have in the game, but they all work really nicely. Uh, banking com is a little different in Horseshoe Curve. You have to use the DISP button to turn it on, and you've got to do it before you do anything else, even before you put that reverser handle in, because it copies the commands across these three controls to the back units as though there's another crew down there. So it's imperative that you turn it on first because, you know, if you put the reverser in and then you turn on banking com and then you move your reverser, well, the other one hasn't got one, so it can't do anything. So you've got to make sure the handle's in. Now, there isn't a way to turn on the alerter in this one, which I think is a, a little bit sad. So hopefully that'll get addressed and we'll get a way to do it. Apart from that, I think it's a really good locomotive. Its physics is nice. It drives quite well. I won't drive it right now because I want to leave that for my stream. I think it's pretty good. I quite like it. Give it a go. See what you think. All right, here's the GP38-2. Fairly nicely modelled. Let's listen to the horn. Really nice. Right bell. Nice attack. Nice decay. Nice timber to the horn. You know it's the loudest bloody horn in the game for sure, don't you? Because it is. I mean, it's loud. I like it. Okay, let's listen to the throttles. Get used to that noise, you hear it a lot on the hills. Alrighty, back in the cab. It's uh, pretty standard for a GP38 to layout. You do have this new device up here which tells you about the brake pressure at the back of the train. Um, again, same with the AES44AC. Banking com is turned on by the DISP button on the radio, which is different from the other routes. It is critical that you turn on banking com before you do anything else. So I've already put my reverser handle in here, and now I've turned on banking com. Now I'm a bit stuffed, unless I take my...
Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. I always like to get your feedback in the form of likes and comments because they help me understand what you want. Give the channel a subscribe and click on the tinkly things so you don't miss out on any new stuff. And thanks for your ongoing support. And please, be safe out there.